well, because of toxic gamers, what we're learning is that Concord is shutting down. That Concord was just shut down because of toxic gamers is what they're saying. But apparently we got another situation at our hands. Put your seat belts on, guys, because apparently we have the Captain BBC. That situation raging wildfires, but more so than that, there's another game now coming out. People are calling it Concord 2.0. People are calling that to be the Antifa simulator. Deadass, like the video if you think there are two genders. Dislike the video if you think there are 5,000 genders. Because you see, today what we're learning is that after Concord gets shut down, gamers, uh, toxic gamers, take aim at anti-capitalist game by the game by the name of fair games and get this i was really really shocked to find out that this game is being made by haven studios and and get this they revealed their game this is by the way tomb raider okay this is one of the best game out there that we had okay people are like asking for the sequels but apparently they're they also turned Lara croft into something like this let me actually get this way <laughs> Let me actually show you guys what's going on, man. This thing is crazy right now. Look at that. This, this is what they're doing right now, bro. What the hell is going on in gaming, right? But this video is not about that. So what we're now learning is that this Concord 2.0, people are calling this to be the Antifa simulator of video games. It's being made by Haven Studios. Now, I'm not sure for how long you guys have been around, but like, I remember a couple of years ago, we were getting rumors left and right that this thing is gonna be working on a ground breaking IP, that it's gonna be amazing, it's gonna be the best PlayStation exclusive, and get this, okay? I do play on PlayStation, let me be a Dreamcast guy for a second and hold that controller in my hands, right? Like, Bruh. like, damn, damn, Sega thought that it's gonna be a groundbreaking IP just like Concord. <laughs> nah, nobody thought that Concord is gonna be like a groundbreaking IP, okay? But you know what I mean, right? So, we had rumors about this studio developing a groundbreaking IP that it's gonna be something amazing, man, like next gen crazy uh apparently what we're learning is that it's just another antifa simulator it's like concord 2.0 and i got a video that i want to share with you and apparently they revealed this a year ago damn it and i didn't i didn't actually know about that this was uh revealed a year ago now uh but because of concord shutting down everybody's like oh this thing right now okay because it fe <laughs> it feels similar to Concord, they're saying that act now, do the heist, damn man, look at that. So it seems like that they are gonna be doing a heist on gamers' wallets. This is what, what it's gonna be all about. Uh, shout out to the homie Dominic for subscribing, gang gang. Now before I show you the next video, it's very very important to say this, that we gamers, we need to come together folks, we gotta come together, we gotta put our differences aside man, we gotta put our differences aside and everywhere I'm looking like gamers are like, oh hell yeah, forget about like whether you play on Xbox, forget about like whether you play on Playstation, we gotta come together as one. And I remember this scene right here, I believe they, they revealed this, yeah yeah last year right, yeah okay now the memory's coming back, although my memory's foggier than Snoop Dogg's bathroom at times, but okay this uh, moment is coming back, I mean damn. To a certain degree, that gameplay shot that we saw kind of looked eyed, but of course it's gonna be like, th this is CGI, right? So did the Concord CGI look kind of eyed to a certain degree? To a certain degree, I'm not saying to full extent, okay? But get this, Dustborn got 12 people playing right now. You know, this game was funded by government, they use taxpayer dollar as well, so okay, whatever, right? 12 people playing, that's like a a restaurant like on a not so busy day right like that's what's going on what about the concord you ask well ow! 42 people playing this game yeah man like 42 people playing this game and a lot of people looking like this right now they're shutting it down and, and it's all over the place but what we're hearing is that these like has spent 100 million to 200 million US dollars. I'm talking the Benjis, okay? The Franklin Benjamins, man. They they spent like 100 million to 200 million dollars, man. 100 million to 200 million dollars. You suck is crazy. You suck is crazy. You suck is crazy. Y'all suck is spend that much money, and what we're learning is that they couldn't even break a million dollars, bro. Damn, that is crazy, man. All right, let's get to let's get down to it, okay? Uh, shout out to the homie Smash JT. Roll it. I think it's fairly safe to say that Concord will go down in history as the biggest flop, or at least up there with some of the all-time terrible games ever made. Wait, but just what? a day after Sony announced that they're closing down Concord and retooling it, do we hear about their next big game as a service called Fair Games, and how this game doesn't look much different or any better than the situation Concord yeah. was in? What's yeah. going on, guys? Welcome to another episode of Smash JT, and Fair Games. Is 
is the next game that could be ending up costing Sony millions upon millions and hundreds of millions. These figures never learn, man. We all thought that Haven Studio is gonna be bringing something crea creative to the table, that it's gonna be one of those games that people look at it and people are like, wow, it's the best game ever, you know, PlayStation, PlayStation exclusive, right? Man, like, this is sadly pathetic, right? Like, first we saw, like, what happened with Xbox, right? Like, all the games are, like, trash. The, the recent ones, right? Like, Starfield was a disaster as well, right? People had high hopes for it. And we had, like, this one as well, right? Like, what's it called? Fable. Damn, homie. Damn, man. Like, damn, bro. The first it was Xbox. And now Sony's like, hey, you know what? Let, uh, let's, let's follow Xbox right now. So they've done that. I mean, damn, bro. There's, what, what's going on in gaming? People thought that it's going to be, like, another Uncharted game. Like, uh, and at this point, bro, I, 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 I wouldn't be shocked if they kill Nathan Drake like Joel. How they killed Joel in Last of Us, right? Yeah, I wouldn't be shocked if, like, Nathan Drake turns out to be strong, independent, you know, need no man kind of situation, right? Like, that would be absolutely wild, man. That would be pathetic if they do that. But at this point, Brad, I wouldn't be shocked if they do that, actually, but of Wait, dollars in failure if this does not work out but i don't know i kind of want to give this one a chance because concord was just over the top dei and ugly characters and stupid stuff that no one wanted and games that already existed that were doing it better for free nobody would want to purchase concord surely fair games isn't going to fall for that same problem oh damn it Hit that subscribe, give me a like, and check out SmashJT.com for the full article talking about how Fair Games looks to be the next gigantic failure coming out of Sony. Sony announced a game called Fair Games, and it's developed by a company called Haven Studios, promising a fresh and modern take on... CGI trailer, not gameplay, some bull squash like that. Yeah, we know, bro. We know, game's gonna suck ass then. On the heist genre, you know, a game that we haven't played before a million times already? Okay, whatever, I'm listening. The game's creative director, Matthew LeDuc, is enthusiastic, of course, about his new IP, claiming that it offers a thrilling and competitive heist experience and a window into different subcultures of society. And right there, it's like, whoa, hit the brakes. What? Like, <laughs> I'm not playing games for finding out- Society. About subcultures and society. I play games to have fun with them. Like, holy crap, how is that one of the first things that comes out of this guy's mouth when talking about a game? It looks like Fair Games is yet another misguided attempt by Sony to jump on that ever lucrative games as a surface model, yeah. just like they did with Concord and failed miserably. But who knows, you know, you put enough eggs and separate them in different baskets, maybe one of them will turn into something special. Maybe, maybe, and then you watch this maybe. and it feels like another Antifa simulator. What's the deal with that? <laughs> Fair Games has been marketed as a game where players join an underground movement to rob the ultra rich, aiming to rebalance. Nah, the only thing they're gonna rob is our wallets. Like, they're gonna be doing high stuff on our wallets, bro. It's the scales in the modern day Robin Hood style that it is. But come on, using that old narrative quickly feels worn out and tone deaf. The whole eat the rich thing has been so overplayed, especially coming from a corporation like Sony, where like any other big business, they aim to make as much money as possible with this game. And they're trying to tell the players like, oh yeah, get yeah. back to those rich people by buying our content and DLC and season passes. That'll really show those rich people. To be fair though, I feel like that they just love losing money. I think that's what it is. These things just want to lose money. I, I mean, how can you like spend? Uh, uh, first of all, it don't even make sense, bro. I'm gonna I'm I'm say it. It don't even make sense. How is Concord a hundred million dollars or two hundred million dollars game? That don't even make sense, bruh. How you suck is I get it, like marketing these days. You know it's crazy, and these things went ultra next level marketing that game. Okay, like Concord was everywhere you know it also get got word of mouth as well but oh, of course it was negative all around i guess like uh duh but what's shocking to me is that after all that publicity after all that marketing from sony from playstation directly indirectly and, and from youtubers trashing the game this and that and rightfully so because the game's trash it's not that YouTubers are trashing it, or gamers are trashing it. The game is trash, and people are just talking as is. People are just speaking the truth, okay? That's basically what it is, okay? So, uh, you would expect the game to, like, have <laughs> more than 42 people playing right now, man. You would expect, especially, especially after yesterday's story, when we heard that PlayStation official blog, I mean, damn, bro, like, I mean, damn, bro, I could, that couldn't be me, bruh. PlayStation put out an official blog post saying that the game is shutting down. So you would expect like people rushing to the stores, like buying the game. <laughs> I'm hearing that Steam actually disabled it. Yeah, so the app has been retired. Oh wow, and it's no longer available on Steam store. Bumbleclad brothers, Bumbleclad. Boy, Fapompom, Bumbleclad. 
don't, don't chase the pom pom guys, chase your dreams. But if your dreams involved uh, making games similar to Concord, then forget about those dreams, brother. Just don't, don't chase those dreams, man. Don't chase those dreams, you're gonna lose a ton of money. I don't want you guys losing like a hundred million dollars as well. But objectively though, like, it, it's sad, right? It's, it's sad for... Uh, for like let's just say normal devs right like be because like for example right if you're working a job let's just say if any of you are working at a fast food restaurant or you know and, like maybe best buy or whatever right like at a, at a store you're there to do your job you're there to do what they're telling you to do right you're there you're there and then you're gonna peace out after when when your hours are done right so you, yeah right like it's uh it's sad for those types of people for sure but i don't feel sad for like the publishers or like the the, the higher-ups as well this like is crazy man and ultimately i wouldn't be shocked if they shut down the studio later on what we're now learning is that maybe they're gonna re-release concord this time for free they're gonna issue refunds to everybody right but you would expect conquer to not blow up but it's not after all the even after all the negative marketing it didn't even blow up why because the game sucks bro simple as that simple as that and gamers have stopped buying the sky is green bowl squash all right like that's where we at man that's where we at gamers waking up right now man people who's boss they keep comparing the game to the robin hood narrative and it makes no sense the robin hood stole from the rich to give to the poor not to enrich himself in fair games the player's goal is to seek personal enrichment filling their pockets like a kid in a candy store making as much money as possible there's a fundamental contradiction in the game's premise that makes it feel more like a disingenuous cash grab than a meaningful commentary on wealth inequality and again we step out of this and say what are we even doing here? We're putting like real world politics, injecting narratives into these games and then trying to make the player feel like they're doing something righteous. Almost like taking over and fighting back against the ultra wealthy and using Antifa style tactics to take them down. <laughs> what are we trying to teach people? Why? Are okay, we honestly, like I, I'm very much ignorant on like the Antifa. I, I, of course I heard about it, but I don't know much about the Antifa. People are calling this to be an Antifa simulator, okay? But I, I'm probably gonna Google after this video. I, I don't know much about it though. I to indoctrinate people with this type of tactic over and over and over again, it seems. And that's what I keep going back to when I watch these trailers. One of the most glaring issues with fair games is the attempt to go out of its way to appeal to this Gen Z audience and potentially even the modern audience by employing yeah. the cool Mo and modern audience the aesthetics. The game's trailer is filled with characters sporting exaggerated trendy hairstyles and flashy outfits, clearly aiming for that younger crowd. But the problem here is that these superficial <laughs> efforts appearing to be hip feel incredibly forced and are pandering. Instead of creating something genuinely fresh and exciting, Fair Games looks to be just a desperate attempt to chase another trend. Just like Concord did when they tried to steal customers from Blizzard and Overwatch. It didn't work. Now, the biggest uh, take back from Concord is they were trying to charge $40 for that experience. But yeah. still, there was an established brand and property that already did this, and they were trying to get some of that pie. Now, this feels... Uh, one thing I, I may have forgot to mention, these things took eight, eight years. <laughs> like, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight years. Damn. Eight years. Eight, I mean... Eight years! years 100 million or to 200 million dollars and you got 42 people playing right now i guess they're enjoying the game you know they're enjoying the game we're gonna let them enjoy man like damn man i don't want to be that guy that that robs the others uh, of happiness man if these suckers are happy <laughs> if these suckers are happy playing the game man i'm gonna let them be happy hey man listen i'm gonna be the last one i'm gonna be the last person okay i'm gonna be the last person but damn man that's like a that's like a uh, of course I, I, I joke around with this, but that's not even a small town, bro. That's not- The other day, when it had like a hundred people, that was a small town, man. That was a small town. I need to Google the smallest town. It was more population. like a Fortnite style mixed with Payday. It's the same old formula that we've seen countless other games as services titles trying to emulate with Fortnite's success. But Sony's fanbase has repeatedly expressed a preference for more grounded, realistic experiences. Like Killzone, Resistance, or yeah. SOCOM. Or even more of the fan- Oh yeah, oh absolutely man. This is, uh, yeah, like, this is what I'm saying as well. I agree with this gentleman, but before we agree with the gentleman, I mean, I already did agree, Bruh. so like, uh, it's, uh, it's over. So Vatican City in Italy has population of 523. Oh man, I was so wrong. I was, and you guys actually said in the comments that Skizzle, like, you're wrong, man. You're wrong, man. Yeah, you're wrong. I agree, but you're wrong, man. That's the smallest town got like 500 some people. Uh, to be fair though, I did see one of you circus actually put a comment saying that <laughs> hey bruh bruh uh, like smallest town is 50 you, you might be you may be right you may be right you may be right maybe google is wrong there yeah google can be wrong though maybe uh 
Yeah, right? But apparently Google is saying 523. Damn, homie, that's crazy. So not even a small town. So let's just say a building, maybe like a small building. Just born, that's like a restaurant uh, on a not so busy day. Let's just uh, put it that way, okay? Let's just put it that way, guys. Let's just put Bruh. it that way. But exactly my point with the homie Smash JT. Sony has been known for their single player games. And listen, man, whether you're an Xbox Andy, PlayStation, Sony Pony, fanboy or normal fan, or prefer one console over over the other you got both consoles or you had xbox you switched to playstation or you had playstation switch to xbox damn you, you you can agree i guess we can all agree that xbox 360 and the playstation 3 era no matter what console you were playing on whether it was like both of those consoles or xbox or playstation don't matter but i guess we can all agree collectively that 360 Xbox 360 and the PS3 era was hands down the best. We were getting some of the best Call of Duty games out there. We we had GTA 4 in that era as well. One of the best uh, one of the best GTA game of all time as well, especially for the time it was light years ahead. Uncharted, man. Uncharted series was going crazy. God of War as well. How many God of War? How many good God of War games we've seen? Not that God of War 2018 and Ragnarok's are not good. I love all of them, but let's be real. If you're gonna tell me, and I said this before, this DEI bull squash, sweet baby ink bull squash. Like if you go back, Alvis would tell you, like, my favorite is God of War 3. Still to this day, that's my favorite, man. There's some special about it, but I still I, I love all of the God of War games, though. I love all of them! But God of War, but in the latest ones, we got 2018 and Ragnarok, so I would go with God of War 2018. Just a lot more concise, a lot more like punchy. Ragnarok just feels kind of like dragged on, but I prefer the boss fights in Ragnarok. Oh, absolutely. It was still injected with Sweet Baby Ink and DEI crap, but this is something that we learned. Sweet Baby Ink had uh, a hand in it, but it, it wasn't too bad. Generally speaking, God of War was actually good, right? Same goes with Spider-Man, right? Oh, they absolutely clowned on Mary Jane, right? They Mar Mary Jane d doesn't even look like Mary Jane no more in Spider-Man. Oh, uh, go figure. It was also linked with Speed Baby Ink. You didn't know. Well, now you know. Too bad, man. That was the reason why <laughs> why Mary Jane was looking that like, like a man, looking that bad. She was like, strong, independent, need no man, need no man. And she even went as far as to say, need no Peter Parker. Damn, we're talking about a superhero game, bro. We're talking about a Spider-Man game, man. Damn, y'all suck is crazy, man. Like, and if you played the game, you know that without uh, Mary Jane, like, Spider-Man would have died. We're talking about Spider-Man. He's a superhero. If it was a normal story, yeah, your partner saving your ass, that's beautiful. That's good. That's amazing. Wow, right? Strong independent. Okay. But we're talking about a superhero game, damn it. So you're saying that if Mary Jane wasn't around, Spider-Man would have died? You sick as crazy. You sick as crazy. So yeah, right? Like, it's just pathetic. Pathetic. Sony had so many good games back in the days, okay? Although I was not a big fan of Killzone, but I would rather Killzone over Concord any day. And especially with current day technology, uh, after we have seen Sony themselves admit in a courtroom, you know, when uh, Microsoft, Xbox, and PlayStation, Sony, they were battling out who's gonna acquire Activision Blizzard, who's gonna acquire Call of Duty. Sony was saying that they're panicking, that they, they don't wanna lose Call of Duty. And I get that Call of Duty is a moneymaker right now. Whether you love it, you hate it, that's different, bruh. But it's a moneymaker. It's like always the, always the best-selling game. Sometimes it comes second spot, but still, like, damn, right? It's crazy. They make billions, billions every single year. So it's a moneymaker. Sony was saying that they're, they're, they're scared. They're panicking. Why not make Killzone? Why not bring back Killzone? You really think that Concord is gonna beat <laughs> Call of Duty, my G? You even X Defined couldn't. Even Battlefield in its prime, and I love Battlefield by the way. Okay, I love Call. I I loved Call of Duty back in the days. I love Battlefield back in the days. Oh man, I was one of those guys. I would play Modern Warfare 3, Battlefield 20, uh, Battlefield 3, not 2042. What I'm saying, uh, Battlefield 3, Bad Company 2, Black Ops 1. Modern Warfare 3, I'm talking about the original back in 2011. Oh shit, like I would play them 24-7. I didn't care like uh, Call of Duty fanboys, what they were saying at that time, what Battlefield fanboys were saying, right? I, I remember like there was always that thing where, you know, the Battlefield fanboys would always like bully the Call of Duty fanboys. Yeah, F yeah, look at our game, look at our game. It's a, it's a lot more manly, a lot more testosterone. And, and to be fair though, back in the days games, <laughs> you know, especially when they did the, the soldiers, uh, real soldiers uniform, uh, a bit, I'm talking about the pre-specialist, pre-$20 microtransaction skin bundle era. I I'm talking about the era, I wish I could say psych right now, but you, you know what I mean? Like, that. the really gave you life! 
but before the BBC Online era, right? Yeah, but, uh, the characters did feel realistic. They felt grounded, and it did add to the realism and, and, and to the uh, atmosphere of the game. And it did boost up uh, the, the 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 player retention, not just because of the characters looking close to real life but because their motive and their objective was not to nickel and dime their players and their customers they there was heart in the game there was heart involved there was passion involved and the the, the seconds just care about making good games bro these seconds were like okay we're gonna drop the game and then it's season pass marketing the dlcs that's why like dlcs were really really hyped up as well the trailers were good they always tried their hardest to make the best games the best uh, maps possible why because they knew if the maps were shit then they wouldn't be able to sell you that season pass that 50 dollars season pass right yeah man simple times i'm not saying that season pass should come back but i'm just uh, making an observation and just telling you uh what what was uh, the, the the case back in the days it's just crazy how we are at this point sony really did care about games xbox really did care about making good games now it's just all this uh live service live service on its own it's good it just means that you're gonna get content post launch you're gonna get content yeah love the idea but apparently the real live service the real content that we get is behind twenty dollars thirty dollars forty dollars sometimes even a hundred dollar microtransaction every every week sometimes bi-weekly as well so you pay for a you pay full price for a game or whether it's free to play a, a call of duty prime example 70 dollars and then you got skins coming out every week bi-weekly and it's just like it's pathetic man that's the that's the new content that's the new content and and, and yeah man it, that that's where gaming is headed but guys check out this video on the screen this recently just happened okay we got an insane video leaking out about black ops 6 okay skill based matching and actual skill based management and video got leaked out i'm not sure if you guys were able to catch it or not you probably heard about skill based management but you're gonna see it in action you want to see how bad that thing is getting check out this video on the screen if you already seen it then check out the video on the left